am going to give away a free t-shirt, bring you a Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown fight, bring you comics news, and reveal the books I bought this week. How y'all doing? I'm Victor, and for the first time in 2020, you are watching the Comic Hero Show. Now kick that logo! Victor Nunley and I am the Comic Hero. Happy New Year, y'all. It's the first episode of 2020, and um, with the new year, the, um, there's also going to come some changes with the show. Now, I'm not going to say exactly what those changes are, however, I'm just going to make them, and I'll let y'all decide. And um, I, I tell you, i um, very excited about um, what this new year is going to bring. I know it's going to be great, and but he here's my thing. I don't want the the new year to just be great for me. I want it to be great for y'all. I mean, I mean, I say I say this almost every year, but yo, know, live your best life. If you lived a, if you lived a good life uh, 2019, strive to live a, a great life in, in this year of 2020. That's pretty much it. All right, it's time to get away a free T-shirt. Alright, on last week's episode, I asked, which member of the Justice League became Field Commander after Superman was killed by Doomsday? Well, the correct answer is Wonder Woman. She was off planet when Superman and Doomsday fought each other, and when she got back and found out that Superman um, had died out of guilt, she named herself Field Commander. Well, seven people have answered correctly, and because they've answered correctly, the name's been earned in a drawing for a free tea, and that drawing takes place right now. So the winner of the free tea for this week's episode of the show is... Jenya Adams from West Monroe, Louisiana. So congratulations, Jenya. We'll use some free comic hero tea. All right, here's the question for next week's episode, and this is a Captain America question, and it's very easy, and I'm expecting a lot of folks to get this right. Which national holiday is also Captain America's birthday? Everyone who answers correctly will be entering the drawing for a free tea on next week's episode of the show. All right, now Tammy Cantrell from Warren, Ohio is requesting a Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown fight, and this one features two birds of prey, or rather, well, one bird of prey and the um, would be bride of the Dark Knight. Rivers in DC, we have Black Canary. And also Rivers in DC, we have Catwoman. These two are gonna duke it out in a segment I like to call The, the Comic, Comic Hero, Hero Throwdown, Throwdown Showdown. Showdown. Welcome to the Comic Hero Throwdown Showdown. Today, it's Black Canary versus Catwoman. Black Canary is an expert martial artist and hand-to-hand -hand combatant who possesses ultrasonic scream and flight and glide capabilities. Catwoman is an expert burglar, skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant and gymnast who utilizes bull whips, sharp retractable claws, and climbing pythons. Who will win? Despite Black Canary's metahuman capabilities, this would be an unbelievable fight. It would start off with hand-to-hand -hand combat. Black Canary would have a slight edge due to her martial arts prowess, but Catwoman's gymnast prowess would give her a fighting chance. Catwoman, being the expert thief, would try to play dirty by using her bullwhip. She wraps around Black Canary's forearm, but the latter decides to play dirty as well. She releases her sonic scream, stunning Catwoman. The latter uses her pythons to get near Canary despite the intensity of the sonic scream. She then claws at Canary's throat, denying her the ability to use her sonic scream and talk, and delivers a vicious heart punch. She then concludes by only saying one word. Meow. Catwoman wins. And that concludes this fight on the Comic, Comic Hero, Hero Throwdown Showdown. Thank you, Tammy Cantrell. I hope you all enjoyed that fight. Now I'll have another one for next week. Now it's time for Comically Speaking. So without further ado, let's talk comics. All right, there are two things we're going to talk about in this segment of Comically Speaking. The first one is this. 
Uh, there's a new Guardians of the Galaxy series that's premiering for Marvel this month. It's going to be written by Al Ewing with art by Juan Cabal. So um, I knew I was a little behind. Well, for those of y'all know, I'm, I'm behind on several books. And, and so I, I went on ahead and read the previous volume of Guardians of the Galaxy, every issue 1 through 12. Now, this series was um, written by Donnie Cates. Now, Cates is, uh, um, is currently the writer of the current Venom series and is going to start is the new writer of the of the new Thor series that's that's premiering um, it, by, um, by Marvel this uh, this month and it, um, but this volume of Guardians of the Galaxy is written by Donnie Case with art by um, by Jeff Shaw well he did the artwork in the um, the first six issues Corey Smith did the, the art in the, the other six but um, this this book takes place right after the events of um, Infinity Wars, where um, Thanos somehow dies. But everyone who, who all the all the Marvel space characters know that Thanos has a reputation of transferring his consciousness into someone else's body, and <clears throat> we find out later on in the um, in the book that he transfers his his consciousness into his own brother Star Fox's body and um here's the here's the weird thing though Star Fox didn't even know that Thanos had done this the only person who knew other than Thanos was Hela yeah the the guardian of hell um knew about this and and, and the only and you know the, one of the reasons is because Hela is um Thanos' love interest but Hela tries to Hela, after reconstructing Thanos' body, um, tries to transfer his consciousness into into uh, back into his own body. But the Guardians, um, you know, um, pretty much you know interrupted that and then destroyed um, Thanos' reconstructed body. And that was pretty much the uh, the first six issues. Oh, um, all, and not only that, um, Gamora returns. Oh and, and, and oh, and here's the awesome thing about um, Guardians of the Galaxy that that um, a lot of folks don't know. Now, now as as for Groot, we all know that. Now you may think that for the longest time, Groot has only has only said you know those same three words, "I am Groot." But thanks to his um, the the farmer that um, that pretty much planted and, and, and nourished him to. It, um, during his growing stage, he know he, he actually talks English now, although he uses third he he um, he talks in third person. So in other words, he talks like this. But instead of saying I, me, or anything else, he always says Groot. Um, but yeah. All right, now the second half of it uh, with the artwork done by Corey Smith. It's a uh, um, it's a story arc entitled Faithless. And it's when a futuristic version of the Universal Church of, of Truth arrives in space, and they end up kidnapping a lot of the um, the space-based Marvel characters, and then um, brainwashing them to, to serve their um, to serve their will. And one of them, one of the first that they end up kidnapping is Jace is Jason, former King of Spartax, and also Star Lord's um, dad. He ends up, and, and not only do, do they do that and uh, brainwash him, but he, he becomes the brand new patriarch of the uh, of the, the Church of Truth. And um, all the Guardians, with the exception of Groot and Moondragon, all go go out to the warship to take them down. But unfortunately, they all become um, brainwashed as well. Well, Star Lord did, but then somehow, some way. He ended up breaking free, and then when Patriarch found out about that, he ordered him to be executed. But then, just as the execution was about to take place, the cocoons that were um, that were growing in in the warship begin to hatch. <clears throat> one of them that hatches um, was was the one that Patriarch kept referring to as the Messiah. We find out the Messiah is a re is a reanimated version of Drax the Destroyer. And then all the other um, 
cocoons that hatched were all duplicates of Drax. Um, and then out of nowhere, Rocket shows up, and he's dying, and I mean, his entire body's withering away, and it's due to complications from the, um, the enhancements that, that he had gotten long ago to, um, to be half, he I mean, to all the robotic enhancements he had, he had, um, received when he was only a, a regular raccoon. And, um, And and so he he had, so he helps them out, but the only thing that's keeping him alive is a war suit that he built himself. And while they're so they end up on this planet and they end up uh, killing they end up killing these beings, but then they end up finding um, a child reincarnation of Adam Warlock's evil doppelganger Magus or Magus. And uh, Magus isn't evil; he's actually good. But the only time that he becomes evil is when someone threatens him. Other, other than that, he, he's just a harmless child. And Rocket knows that Magus is the only person capable capable of taking down, um, of using his... Well, okay, Moon Dragon can as well, um, psionically, but Magus, but Magus has a, um, has a say, has similar... Sci uh, similar if not uh, more powerful psionic abilities than the Moon Dragon, and so they end up they end up on a warship. They um, and then they psionically break uh, break every everyone free of, of the of, of the mind control. And meanwhile, um, uh, Rocket, who um, who was thought to have been taken down by some of um, the Patriarch's minions. Uh, um, he's he's helped by the uh, by Groot's uh, spawns called um, what what are they called? Um, oh, by Groot um, Stab. That's what that's what they they call they call themselves. So they they go around saying I am Stab, I am Stab. But anyway, he they um, they help him to get around to the warship. And he rigs the all, all the controls of the warship to not only fully free every everyone, with the exception of Patriarch, but also to, but also um, since uh, also um, rigged it to the point where he 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 set coordinates to for the warship to return to its own time, which is what happens. But but the uh, all the guardians and all all the other characters that were. Um, that were on board that ship got off of there in the nick of time, and um, the the church, yeah, the church of the Universal Church of Truth returns to its own time. But, but unfortunately, Jason of Spartax um, is still aboard there, and Star Lord's kind of bummed out about it. And then they end up taking in Rocket, who is who's hanging by a thread. They end up getting taking him to a, an intergalactic hospital where he receives treatment. You know, one thing about this book, though, these two, I mean, the first six issues of it can be a movie, and then the last six issues of it can be a movie. I, I hope Marvel Studios in, in the future, um, you know, uses, excuse me, elements of, of those story arcs in, in any Guardians of the Galaxy movie, if they ever come out with any more after um, Volume 3. Pretty cool stuff, and I can't wait to uh, read the, the next volume. All right, now, the, the last thing, and... This is some news from Louisiana Comic Con. Um, Jason David Frank is going to be a guest at Louisiana Comic Con. For those of y'all don't know who he is, he was at the begin the in the very first season of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. He played um, Tommy Oliver, who at first was the uh, the Green Ranger who who piloted the Dragon Zord Ranger, and then and then he became the um, the the White Tiger Ranger who um, piloted the the Tiger Zord, and then he he returned a few years later in um, Turbo and Power Rangers. Oh, and also he was in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie as the the White Tiger Ranger, and then he was also in Turbo a Power Rangers movie, and then uh, the TV show Power Rangers Turbo, and then years later he returned as a Power Ranger after a long after many after many series 
in uh, Power Rangers Dino Thunder to be a leader and teacher of, of the Power Rangers, of, the, of a new generation of Power Rangers. A lot of folks love this guy. I mean, he loves Louisiana. Louisiana loves him. So why not make him a guest? I think it's great. So if you're if you're if you're a fan of anything Power Rangers, and 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 um and you're now familiar with who Jason David Frank is, you may want to buy your tickets. I mean, uh, Louisiana Comic Con and. and in Lafayette, it's on, I mean, it's a it's a two day event. It's on it's on Saturday and Sunday. It's at the Cajun Dome Convention Center, and I, I tell you, it's always a huge turnout out there. Though, um, in the in the half decade that it's it's been out there. All right, that's it for comically speaking. Now let's get to the comics I bought this week. Comic books I bought this week. Alright, first up is Action Comics number 1018. Batman the Outsiders number 8. Black Panther number 18. Black Panther number 19. Catwoman number 18. Detective Comics number 1017. Detective Comics number 1018. The Flash number 85. Really Neighborhood Spider Man number 14. Justice League Dark number 17. This is a Year of the Villain uh, special cover. Now, I'm about to open this up. Y'all yeah, check this out. Justice League Dark number 18. Justice League Odyssey number 16. Marauders number 5. Miles Morales Spider Man number 14. Supergirl number 37. Teen Titans number 37. Really excited about this book. Thor number one. By the way, this is the book that, that I said was uh, 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 written by um, by Donny Cates. Also by art by um, by former Dare, uh, Deadpool um, penciler Nick Klein. Wonder Twins number ten. And finally, X Men number four.
All right, that's 19, which brings the total number of comics that I bought since December of 1997 to 9,795. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode, the first episode of 2020. Here's a question again for a free tea for next week's episode. Which national holiday is also Captain America's birthday? Everyone who answers correctly will be in the drawing for a free tea on next week's episode of the show. And congratulations to Ginia Adams from West Monroe, Louisiana who won a free tea on this week's episode. <clears throat> All right, now next week's episode, I'm gonna, re I'm gonna wear a shirt representing the, the school that won the national champ, who wins the national championship next week. It's either gonna be LSU or Clemson. Honestly, I hope it's LSU. Or Thomas. Um, well, you know, I'm just saying that because, you, know, uh, you know, I'm a Louisiana boy and, and all that. But, you know, it uh, made, the best, made the best school win. Um, good luck to LSU. Good luck to Clemson. And, um, yeah. And I also have some other things that... Um, I'm still trying to think of some stuff to do on, on you know every, every on every other episode. I can tell you that next month it's Mardi Gras. I, it, almost every episode of the show I'm going to do in the month of February is Mardi Gras, and down here in Louisiana, or really down here in Louisiana and um and certain in, in certain parts of Mississippi, it's a big deal. And um, you know I'm going to do it up. I'm going to wear shirts representing the. Uh, Representing the three colors of, of Mardi Gras, which are purple, green, and gold. Purple represents justice, green represents faith, and gold represents power. And I'm also going to have the um, the de uh, decorated at, like I did last year, so it's going to be awesome. And um, I just want to go ahead and say this again. Let... 2020 be a better year than 2019. Anything you, if you did, if, if it was a good year for you, make 2020 a great year. Claim it. Own it. If, 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 if there's something that you want to do that you didn't do in 2019, go for it. That's what I'm going to do. A lot of things that, that I didn't get a chance to do, um, I didn't get a chance to do last year that I'm that I'm definitely going to strive to do this year. And y'all should do the same. Alright, I'm Victor Nolly on the Comic Hero. I'll see you next week for episode 293. So until then, be safe, be blessed, be a hero, and Happy New Year, y'all! <laughs>